Hey there, and welcome to my tutorial about how to draw or paint birch trees, very beautiful trees that are especially famous for their white bark. In particular, I'm going to focus on one specific birch tree, which is the silver birch or European white birch. And in Latin it is called Betula pendula. And I just really love how it sounds like Betula pendula. Anyways, let's start with the drawing. At first, we're going to draw a very quick and simple sketch just to define the general shape. Starting with the trunk, which is normally a bit thinner and goes up straight like so. We don't have to draw too many details, however, you can decide to add more if you like to. And then we drop in some random shapes here. We can also make it kind of melty looking to indicate the hanging twigs and leaves. The size varies a lot and they can hang over each other. They can be smaller ones. Normally the width is shorter than the height and the distance between the ground and the bottom of the foliage can be a bit shorter, but it can also be quite tall. There is a lot of variation, even for just this one specific birch tree. It also depends on its surroundings, if there are a lot of other trees close by or it just stands alone. And here is a sketch that I prepared beforehand just to make sure that I have something better looking. What I'm going to do next is already put down some paint. The sketching is for the most part over and this paint won't be erased. Therefore, I'm already using one that has a lot of texture to it. I apply only very little pressure and make it very jittery looking and also let it kind of have these melting down, these drooping down shapes. In particular what we're sketching out are the leaf clusters. Now what is that? The leaves are not distributed evenly but they are grouped together, carried by the individual branches and therefore we have these so-called clusters that I'm going to kind of sketch in here. The size of these clusters can vary a lot and they can be small and very large ones. And also the shape should be at least somewhat contained. With that I mean it doesn't like go all the way super crazy and stringy or something like that. We leave some space in between those clusters which can also vary a lot. And the sketch that we drew beforehand is just more of a guideline but we can easily draw outside of it or leave some gaps in between. You're probably noticing that I'm using a very dark and greenish color. In general, it is highly recommended that you either start with the darkest or the brightest color. It might also depend on the tool that you are using. As for watercolors, colored pencils or pastel chalks, the darker colors are normally more dominant. Whereas for oil paints, for example, it is possible to start with the darker color and then make the brighter color stick to it. And of course, if you're using digital media, then it is completely up to you. I personally like to start with the darkest color because it is easier for me to get the shapes right and also the overall brightness. However, if you want or have to use the brightest color, then this tutorial can still be useful for you. Well, at least I hope so. You just have to revert some orders and it's not too complicated, so I know you can do it. And so let me switch to the version that I have already prepared and it looks much nicer. In general for this tutorial I have the steps already prepared beforehand and in between these I am showing to you how it is done and explain everything to you. Also I'm limiting myself to only one layer for the leaves in order to imitate the feel of traditional methods. This way I can make sure that my techniques are not only useful for those that are using digital media but for everybody. And now when we look at the sketch here you can see I left here and there are some bigger gaps brought in some variation, a lot of small but also big shapes, so there's a lot going on here. Next up we want to drop in a lot of color, but at first we have to know where the light comes from. In our case we want to have it from the upper left and slightly from the front, therefore the bottom right and the back part will be the darkest. And the tool that I'm using now kind of imitates very well the leaf shapes, it has a lot of dots that I can paint in. And the movement that we want to use for the most part is like these slight strokes. You can make the brush even finer and have these individual almost like strands of leaves. However, we want to have some variation as for the direction. You can also bring in some curves and we don't only want to use that. You can also make here and there some circular moves or some tapping in order to bring in more texture and variation to your painting. And so I'm just filling out these shapes. Also additionally this brush is very light and is able to mix colors that is already existing on the layer. Therefore I'm getting even closer to the feel of traditional media. And yeah, I'm just filling these shapes out. And in general we want to still leave out the brightest areas. If we get closer to them then the density of this darker color will get lower and lower 
until we just straight up skip the ones that are on the very left and upper side. When you paint, make sure that your strokes aren't getting too long because we don't want to paint a willow tree after all. It is just a birch tree and don't forget to bring in some variation here and there. That space in between those leaf clusters that we sketched out, like here, will also be filled in. Partially or completely, it is up to you. The tree is not one solid shape but has some irregularities and also some holes where it can look through. But still make sure that you have some leaf cluster shapes be visible. And the amount of how much the leaves are hanging down or just are more of like randomly orientated is also for the most part up to you. I personally like it a lot when they are hanging down like that. It makes it kind of more romantic looking in a way, <laughs> if you could if you could say that. But this is just personal preference, of course. Now what we also want to do is we want to plan in some holes for the front layer of the leaves. Now what do I mean with that? Well, you can imagine that the leaves are structured basically into two layers, the back part and the front part. So the leaves that are further away and closer to the viewer. The front part will be brighter than the back part. The back part especially will be quite dark. And therefore, if you have some holes in the front layer, there will be basically only dark color in that general area. This means there will be no additional paint or barely any paint in the later stages. And we have to make sure that we get enough paint already in these areas. For example here, I want to maybe decide that here and maybe a little bit over here, there will be some holes in the front layer. We will see the back part of the tree. And so I want to get the density already right. And so at the end it will look something like this. The foliage of a birch tree is normally not that dense and therefore you can leave some more gaps and don't have to go that crazy with the density of your paint. Now we want to pick out the next color. And actually let me talk about the palette for a bit. If we take a closer look you can see you have a dark green which moves more and more to a brighter yellowish green. This color variety in your painting makes it more interesting and also can define the mood of your painting. With some yellow for the brighter areas we can make the tree much more warmer looking like it's standing outside in a warm sun rays. But of course what colors and how many different colors you're using is completely up to you. And what we want to do here is just basically fill out most of the rest that we left out and also define where the light hits these clusters, so more on the upper left. But don't just exactly follow it because these leaf clusters aren't like perfect shapes. There are a lot of irregularities in them and so we drop in here and there some random spots that are also brighter. And this is how my prepared version looks like and you can see at the border here it's still kind of looking scarce but this will change later on. So let's go ahead and use the next color and drop in more areas and you can just go ahead and don't follow exactly the shapes that you've defined beforehand but you'll also just straight up paint into the white or the background. It is completely up to you. And also as you get closer and closer to the brighter areas if you're painting more in the center you want to have more and more finer details. You just lightly paint into it and don't just like straight up make some blotches otherwise it would look kind of out of place. And especially for the brighter colors we more and more want to avoid the holes that we have defined beforehand. And there we go you can see I left out this area and a little bit over here too and added more density up here at the top. In general the top and the core of the tree will be the most dense areas and while here on the side there are more gaps and less dense color. And so here we have the brightest color now and I'm making very fine details and another thing you can do, which also goes for the previous steps, is you can add here and there some extra little details, some floating little leaves. And it doesn't matter too much, you can make them completely disconnected, as long as they're not flying all the way in space. And just that doesn't make any sense, of course. But you can go crazy a little bit, and it does also apply for like in between these areas. You can just like, oh, here's a little bit of extra, and here, and just make it more random, add more little details, and this brings more variety and more interesting looks to your tree. And in general, we want to have a lot of this bright color up here, and paint very lightly here at the center, and down here, which are basically leaving out the brightest color altogether. Also go ahead and just make some little taps here at the border. So there are some very light taps which then indicate some extra leaves that are just hanging around. And so in the end it can look something like this. Another thing which is not necessary but I personally like to do a lot 
is I have this brush here which drops in a lot of little leaf shapes that are quite solid. I'm using the brightest color and just basically limit myself to the brightest area that we already have painted. And this doesn't stick out too much, but just rather adds in some little sparkles in a way. Some little details to the brightest area. You can also pick out the second brightest color and go one step closer to the, to the darker areas. And this way you can make it more magical and sparkly looking, which I personally like a lot. You can also go ahead and drop in some of these leaves here at the border, just make them float around. And this is the final version of the foliage. Meow. Yum meow meow. <laughs> Hoko wanted some attention. Oh well. So next up we want to finally paint in the wood part of the tree. The trunk and the branches and everything. For that we are going to use a medium dark grey. And just use a very solid brush. And go ahead and brush in right here. Put a lot of color down and make it very dense and solid. And as we get close to the leaves, we want to have this brush here again. And just very very lightly make some slight strokes right into the leaves. Very very lightly. And let the trunk fade out. You can partially paint over some little details if they're just completely in the way. But for the most part, we want to save, we want to retain the shape of the leaves and these clusters. And then it just grows up in here, can have some slight curvature, but normally it doesn't warp too much. And this trunk here will be designated as our main base of operation, as you could say. And so we have bigger branches growing out of it and carry all of these leaf clusters. And what we want to do is we want to decide already which group of leaf clusters is carried by which branch. So for example, here at first I'm gonna drop in the trunk again and then have a branch that curves towards this group here. There will be some smaller branches growing out of it, and also some very fine ones here at the border, but only a few. We don't want to overdo it, because they are going to be hidden underneath the leaves for the most part anyways. And this is generally how you do it. You decide over which parts you're going to paint over, and which parts are going to remain, and then just make these fade outs. I'm not going to do it this right now but we have a prepared version that we can take a look at. It is kind of nice to have these holes in the front layer of the leaves because then you can very clearly see the branches and the trunk. As for the shape of the branches, they are not getting too warpy, but still bring in some curvature. And also make them always progressively thinner and thinner. This means you don't just go ahead and have a small branch, like a small twig, growing out of the trunk, of the big trunk. This wouldn't make any sense for this kind of tree. And as for the number of branches, now this is a very reduced version, and in reality there are hundreds and hundreds of branches. When you draw or paint all of these little details, not only is this very time consuming, but you overload your painting very quickly by doing that. It takes a lot of effort in order to make it somewhat look good, and it only makes sense for something like ultra-realism style. However, here I'm just doing something like semi-realism, and you could reduce it even more to like some sort of comic style. Therefore my advice is just make sure that everything is held together. When you get to a number of branches where you think, yeah, for the most part it looks alright, there are not too many leaves and leaf clusters floating around, then that's about the time where you simply stop. Of course there can be here and there some little details that are not connected by branches, but it doesn't matter too much, it really is totally fine. There are some other options too, as for when to add the wood part of the tree. You could even start with that and then add the leaves. Or you can paint at first the back part of the leaves, then the wood part, and then the front layer of the leaves. First of all, if you're using traditional media, some of these options might be impossible even, or just very difficult. And all of these have their pros and cons. Here in this case, for example, I was able to paint the leaves and the, these clusters very freely however I wanted, but then had to adjust the branches to them. I had to connect everything and I wasn't able to just go crazy with those. However, if you start with the branches, then you can do whatever you want at that stage and then have to adjust the leaves to them. So it just simply comes down to personal preference. So next up we want to add more values to the trunk and the branches. So I'm using here this light grey. Also make sure that you leave those areas that right underneath the leaves 
very dark still because there are shadows and here to the center there would be probably less brightness going on and now you can decide which branches are growing to the front or to the back and there are some methods to it for example you know here we have some lighter spots on top and the bottom of this branch here if you want to decide that this branch here grows to the back what you do is to just paint this light arrow as if this branch doesn't even exist. So you cut it off from the trunk in some kind of way. And you can then paint some of its own little details of course. Or if you want to have it grow to the front, then you kind of let the light arrow fade into this branch and have the shadow cut into the trunk in a way and then add the little details over here and there. Now let's take a look at this branch here which grows to the right. If you want to have it to the front you just let the lighter area stretch into the trunk. If you want it to the back you just simply leave it dark and just have here and there some details. And here we can also indicate the lighter area. And this way you can bring much more three dimensionality to your painting and make it much more interesting. We additionally want to just have some straight up white in the painting because the bark is very bright it's also like straight up white after all and we want to show that in our picture and what i'm doing is normally i just blend in those values to have a smooth surface it is normally not very rough not very smooth and so you would have something that looks like this i still kept some texture to it to make it more interesting looking not just bland completely smooth but yeah it is up to you how you want to do it and last but not least some little details that are very typical for these birch trees which are these rips these holes in their bark you draw them by having kind of like these cuts straight horizontally on the bark and make them a bit wider at the center their shape can vary a lot also here at the border the bark is normally very straight and smooth. However, right where you have these holes, it kind of looks like it's bulging out in a way. And the surface of the bark inside these holes is normally very rough. So very different from the white bark. Therefore, you want to have a lot of variety, a lot of little details here and there. You can also go ahead and make some kind of like rips into the, the white bark, some straight lines. Don't overdo it with that, of course, though. And if we would zoom in, you would see a lot of little tiny cuts on top of the bark. You can also go ahead and add here and there some little extra details that indicate some ribs, some small holes in the white bark. And also what is fairly common is that at the bottom, the bark just is completely missing. Could be, for example, that some small animals have been eating it away or some other factors came into play. And so this is the final version of our birch tree. In general, I really like how they look with these hanging leaves. I think Bob Ross called them hangy downs in a way. <laughs> and also the bark is just really beautiful looking. I love it a lot. Next up, I will show you another painting of a birch tree, this time in autumn. And while the time lapse is running, I will tell you some interesting facts about them. First up, there are about 60 different species of birch trees and almost all of them are found in temperate climate zones. They reproduce by having male flowers in the form of catkins produce the pollen, which then spreads out by wind or insects to the female flowers, which are also catkins. And when they grow old and big enough, they spread out and release the dry, flattened fruits that are carrying the seeds. Native tribes like the Native Americans use the bark of the birch tree for all sorts of purposes, like for the construction of waterproof and light canoes, wigwams, bowls, and so on. Also, their bark has been used as paper for centuries, believed to have originated in Afghanistan around the 1st century CE. Alright, and this is how my second birch tree in autumn looks like. I split the trunk into two parts this time and made the height quite tall. Also, I made sure that here at the bottom, the leaves are just very scarce and scattered. And of course, if you look very closely, you can see a lot of sparkles in the brightest area. As for the colors, you start with a dark brown, then move towards the orange, and then to a bright yellow. 
And as always, I want to motivate you that you make your tree look however you want to. Don't try to copy me, but bring your own personality into it and just have fun and go crazy. And if it doesn't look right at the first time, then you just keep on going and you will figure it out, I'm sure. Thank you so much for watching and I hope this video helps you a lot in order to draw lots of beautiful looking birch trees. As always, if you have any questions or constructive feedback, then please let me know down below in the comment section. And if you want to have more information and links, then go check out the description of this video. Alright then, have fun drawing. <laughs>